Whether you are just starting to use AI for your image generation, or if you're a seasoned prompt engineer, whenever a new model comes out, it is still fun to dive in and see just what makes things tick. Which is exactly what I did with the new OmniGen 2 model. However, this time I decided to go with a somewhat less conventional approach. If you saw my last video on context prompting, you might have noticed that for being more creative, having a high level of guidance can mess that up a bit. Your images become too structured and you can get colour saturation problems. Why not try the same thing with OmniGen 2, I thought. So I did, and discovered some rather interesting and unexpected results along the way. I am using Comfy UI here, but the general principle can be applied whichever interface you decide to use. When you browse templates in Comfy UI, you'll see a menu like this, with the OmniGen 2 workflow being available via image, and then OmniGen 2 text to image, as you can see there on the screen. You will then get a workflow much like this one with a default CFG of 5. Obviously, one of the first things you'll want to try and generate is a painting of a dapper squirrel, just like the one I'm trying to do with this particular prompt. A dapper British gentleman squirrel's alert expression, a dynamic blend of verdant moss-covered bark textures intertwining with delicate fern fronds and dewdrops. So basically I've got a sort of sublime organic painting style. However, with the default settings you may get something such as this, which is obviously oversaturated but also not quite the style I was going for and certainly not dapper enough. What is one to do in such cases? Well, Building on last week's video, the first thing to do was to set the CFG to 1. This time the result is much better, in that the colours aren't oversaturated and it has a painting style. But he still isn't quite as dapper as one would like. This calls for a structured investigation into the case of the missing dapperness. Here you can see how I started the structure of my investigation. The starting note on the left contains my prompting goal, with the green note containing my initial test prompt. The final note in this section details the method, results and classifications. The classifications are of course made up on the spot just what I thought the image looked like, such as the elf ear, ghost face and mess. To give you a better idea of how I made those classifications, here is a selection of some of the test images. You may already be able to see what I mean by elf ear and ghost face now. Essentially, you can just create any label you like, so long as you know what you're talking about at this stage, because it's just like laying out all the clues on the table in front of you. Now, there are some very interesting looking faces there, and one could be tempted to explore those samplers more. However, in my case, the one that really stuck out was the one I simply called the mess. That's this one over here. Now, it does seem to be different to all the others. These ones are sort of burnt, but this one, well, it seems to be messy in a very different way. Interesting. It seems then as if one of these things is not like the others. Marvellous. The clue that doesn't fit, but is part of our investigation into the case of the missing dapperness. This is the perfect creative candidate for exploration. This is not our squirrel yet, as one needs to see how the mess evolves first, so here we are in the investigation lab looking at the messy clue. Also in the lab I've added something to compare with, so we have our typical elf ear at the bottom and the mess there at the top. One advantage of this CFG is that it is faster because we no longer care about the negative prompt. 50 steps takes the same time as 25 would usually, so we can use that to our advantage. Here, at 50 steps, we can see there is a face in the mess after all. We just need a few more steps to make sure it isn't quite as messy, but then that's also pretty useful because I am looking for more organic, creative images. So perhaps rather than using the CFG, 
I could use the number of steps to determine the level of mess. Well, let's see if that holds and go up to 100 steps. Oh, that doesn't seem right. At 20 steps it was a mess. At 50 steps it was barely less messy. And yet, at 100 steps, um, that's not messy at all. How does that make sense? OK, fine. Let's do just one more step and see what 101 steps looks like. Oh, that also doesn't seem right. Um, just a single step and the mess has returned. Perhaps even messier than ever. Or perhaps not. There's more of a richness to those colours. I mean, I actually quite like it like that. It, it was a face, but now it's, I don't know, it's more artistic and pleasing. But hold, hold on, no, that's silly. One step can't make that much difference, can it? I know, let's try 99 steps. Ah, OK. Um, that's interesting. Not a mess, but one step down from the 100-step face. So I do have creative control by using the number of steps after all, but only up to 100 in this case before it then becomes a mess again, albeit a different type of mess. Hmm, I guess there's only one thing to do next, isn't there? Yes, let's crank it up to 200 steps. Oh, this is starting to make sense now. 200 is once again a face, but it's moving towards that sort of photographic style instead of the painting. I've also done the other one down the bottom there at 200 steps. Gives a very good face too, but you can see the difference in the skin details and things. You know what that means then, don't you? Want to bet what 201 steps looks like? Yes, indeed it is 201 steps and it's gone back to being a mess. Awesome. As you can see in my notes, I then proceeded to test a variety of schedulers and it wasn't always the same. For example, using the exponential scheduler, the clear image cycle was every 1000 steps. Uh, yes, testing does take a long time, but it is useful to double check everything along the way. A different scheduler can also give a very different image and often beta or simple looked the best to me, but that is, of course, often also a case of personal preference. I also tried some of the other ancestral samplers and they gave very different results indeed, so I decided to focus back on learning more about just this one. Certainly something to explore in the future perhaps though. As you can see there, I also tried different prompts and here is where it gets even more fun. The more vague your prompt, the more likely it will drift meaning you are then able to get something different every cycle of 100 steps. On the other hand, if your prompt is very detailed and specific, you will gradually lose those variations like we saw in the face example, where the first 100 steps looked quite creative, but after that you get this more sort of photography ordered style. Therefore, in this example, I'm using a very vague prompt, which, as you can see, sort of changes as it goes along. Whispered becoming, caught in light's fracture, where form and style unmade endlessly shift with a trace of gnawed shadow. An almost glance, a resonant human echo, momentarily held in pigment, lends all trace, then given to the flow on a skittering edge. Curiously enough, this at 100 steps gives a surprisingly good face with just a little hint of fracture on the cheek and above the eye. However, at 200 steps, the cycle is very different. As you can see, the image is becoming unmade. Those solid features have begun to dissolve and it's, well, a bit more like a painting. You could also go halfway between the two if you like, with 150 steps being more fractured than 100, but less so than 200. If you're particularly silly like me, you could also just keep going, like in this 600 step example, and well, there aren't any faces anymore, Captain, but I can sort of see the hair, and I like it. 
And do remember, this is the same prompt with a fixed seed. All the way up at 800 steps, and this time it's changed to people, both made and unmade at the same time, a sort of resonant human echo, uh, just like in the prompt. Great. So now we know about this particular cycle, how about we throw one more little tool into the mix? Yes, welcome to the ETA value. This time I've added the non-ancestral version at the bottom, and as you can see with the ETA for the ancestral version at the top set to zero, both images are identical. Thus, if you only want to add half the magic of the ancestral sampler, you can just set the ETA to 0 0.5. Thus, if you only want to add half the magic of the ancestral sampler, just set the ETA to 0 0.5. And there you go, halfway between the halfway point, 50 steps with an ETA of 0 0.5. And I think that looks rather lovely. Well, that was quite the journey, wasn't it? So many new things to try and different options to explore. Let's just have a quick recap. So for creative prompts, stick to a CFG of one. You can use a higher CFG and that will iterate over the same image each time, so your choice. Vague versus more definitive prompts can also have a similar effect. The magic number of 100 means no more guessing those step counts for this cyclical sampler. You can mix two images just by picking the number of steps. For example, 150 is a mix of 100 and 200. You can mix even more by adjusting the ETA value. The magic number or cycle will change based on the scheduler and other factors even up to as high as 1,000 with the exponential scheduler. And as for the case of the missing dapperness, well, it turns out it was in there all the time. I simply had to look. Love the hat, mate. Very dapper. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.